let us look a little bit at the scaling of one electrical, one piece of electrical apparatus. I don't want to spend a great deal of time, but a little time we can spend on this. Let us look a little bit at resistance measures as a function of scale. I want to remind you of how resistance works with scale, this simple operation of, of resistors. Here we have these two electrodes, and I think we have a couple of people who are going to work as circuits for us. Can we have a couple of uh, volunteer circuits? Thank you very much. It is worthwhile first bringing the two electrodes together to show people what zero resistance looks like on the meter. Can you do that? Just touch them. And there the meter, way over here, shows zero resistance. Now pull them apart, but don't touch them. That is now then, they're way over at the other end. That's almost an infinite resistance, nothing but the air and the dry wood between them. So here is zero resistance. Here is a very high resistance. Now let's measure your circuit resistance, if we can. Do you want to wet your hands? I think it will help the contact, because it will make the contact more uniform if the hands are always wet. There's no, there's only a tiny battery here. There's no danger of any kind. I turn the scale. And therefore, it's about, I read about four on this scale, which is a good place to read. Now let's try you. Very good. And again, not very different, about three. Slightly larger hands, I believe, and that makes the difference. <laughs> now that's three and four. Suppose we make the circuit go all the way through, what would you expect to get? The circuit is being lengthened. And so I think you will add first the one resistance and then the other. These people are in series. Of course, there's also a little extra contact resistance. And the result, indeed, is about six or seven. That's very good. That's similar to the sum. On the other hand, let's make the two circuits. You will allow the circuit to travel, OK? And then you help her. See, now the circuit is going through both at once. Each one is helping. The circuit has been widened instead of lengthened, if you like. And now the result is less than either one. It's well under two, as you see here in the meter. Thank you very much. Good circuitry. So we see, that, uh, we see that the circuit works in that fashion. And now let me just describe the scaling a little bit so it gets some numbers down. It's clear if I have a piece of wire like that or a piece of wire like that, this is shorter than this. This resistance should be greater than this resistance. So the resistance in ohms, say, is proportional to the length of the circuit L. And if I double the length, I would expect to double the resistance, holding everything else equal. That's what we learned from the series connection. But what about the other connection, which people call shunt or parallel, where both circuits work at once? That corresponds to putting another line here, to widening it. And of course, if I make it in proportion wider, twice wider, I would expect to get less resistance due to having more available. And the less comes both because of making it wider this way, and also in three dimensions, making it wider going in and out of the board. So two powers of L come from that, and that part goes like L squared. So the overall result is like 1 over L. The resistance, two similar resistors, will be, have resistance in the proportion 1 over their characteristic size, a typical size. So a big resistor, a big piece of wire, will have a much smaller resistance than a small piece of similar wire made uh, by, by one power of the size ratio.